Well, hot diggity dog, we actually got the light goal on the Brandenburg campaign. And because of that, today we'll make Germany great again and crush everybody in Europe. If you want to see the third and final part for this campaign, don't forget to leave a like. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it, guys. Because we did rush getting the German Empire borders, our situation is not amazing from certain perspectives. We are quite behind with our admin tech and we need to catch up with that. We also have close to zero professionalism because I slack in quite a little bit. And that's why we have zero manpower as well. Continuous warfare. And we do have a little bit of a coalition going on right now. Most of these countries I have a truce with. So I'm basically just going to be truce dodging them whenever the truce expires i'm just going to be attacking them and making sure that the coalition is not too big but the reality is for the first five to ten years we're literally just going to have to consolidate our nation convert all the nation because we also just switched to protestant and we have to convert the entirety of germany to protestant before we do anything else as not having protestant in our provinces means we get less income and higher unrest from our civilians let's go ahead and summon the diet see whatever agendas we have that are pretty easy to do nobody in a coalition in less than 15 aggressive that's not gonna happen anytime soon let's go for brandenburg is protestant that's easy to do right here just gotta convert this one province we're also gonna be selling some titles even though it's bringing us over the threshold here and we're getting some autonomy it is worth it we seize land and we can get the other five percent crownlands from just devving up provinces and yes the first part of this video i'm also gonna show you guys how you can make a super super strong country from just playing tall that means we're not going to expand too much we're going to consolidate and we're going to basically get more manpower and a stronger nation than all the other nations combined in the world so let's bring our troops back home first off we're also going to start building some more ships as we want to get more trade power in the lubeck trade node never be afraid to go a little bit over your naval force limit it's not that big of a debuff overall and plus economically we have more than enough money right now looks like we got to kill some uh, particularists around the nation and we're slowly getting the admin points to actually corrupt the lands that we need to corrupt. Oh boy, the only nation we can actually rival is our only proper ally here, the Ottoman. But it is what it is, we gotta rival them. We're even gonna send them an insult once we can. And that's basically us and the French against any potential coalition. Historical German-French brotherhood, of course. I was also unfortunate and I got a few corruption events, which is why I'm spending a maximum amount of money that I can spend on corruption once we slide this down it's a-okay but we got to get rid of corruption guys in all of your games remember corruption is the worst thing as it essentially increases the price for everything and it gives out a lot of debuffs so you want to get rid of corruption as soon as possible especially if you're romanian okay also make sure that you assign your troops to autonomously suppress the rebels this is going to overall cause less rebellions in the country and you're going to have less of a hard time dealing with so many separatists that would otherwise appear everywhere the second great part about doing this is that obviously Obviously, your troops are gonna by themselves kill off the rebels whenever they spawn. You don't need to manually just micro the troops around the map continuously. And I strongly recommend that you have level 5 advisors for whatever mana points you need most. I'm really lacking with admin as I showed you guys. So I'm trying to get as many admin points as I can. So I finished coring and making full states out of all of the provinces that I have. Look at this. Everything is a full state except a couple states in the south. I'm gonna make those full states eventually. I got 992 out of a thousand governments governing capacity now eventually i also get more governing capacity from my admin technology and i'm literally just waiting for that to happen before i actually click the button and switch over to prussia i recommend you wait until admin tech 12 before you form prussia as admin tech 12 is going to help out with the governing capacity issues not to mention you're also going to be able to build some courthouses by that point and that's going to lower the governing capacity cost by 25 percent and there you have it we now have made every single german province a a full integral part of our nation full states for everybody which means we're getting the maximum amount of income and manpower from all of our provinces oh hello there nobility they want us to subjugate the nation of switzerland i don't think i mind that that sounds like a pretty good idea a little bit of a swiss vassalin over here well what do you know our former rival of muscovy is willing to ally us not a moment too soon because i'm about to attack the nation of switzerland to vassalize them and they're allied to my 
only current ally, which is France. So I'm switching France over for the Muscovites, essentially. I'm also going to be diplomatically vassalizing the nation of Siena to start getting a proper foothold in the Italian peninsula. Let's get another general for this army as we're going to use them in the south front. Let's go, boyos. Let's get both of these boys actually in the south. We're also going to be exploiting all of our tax development as tax dev is not really that important. And we're going to start developing after the provinces with production and manpower being our main targets for development. So we don't really need the tax dev at all. And we can use this money to build more courthouses. Look at that. From all the tax that we exploited, we managed to get 3,000 ducats, which is a whole lot of courthouses overall. I think we can probably finish the courthouses in the entire country here. Enough delay with this war. I really need to be at war. I'm so freaking bored right now. Let's go against the Swiss. And the French are still at war with the Burgundians. And I don't really want anything from them for the time being i'm just gonna ask them for some money and quickly piece them out i am of course gonna barrage and assault this fort i'd rather lose manpower by assaulting this fort rather than losing manpower from the attrition of me sieging this for two three years and wasting my time as well in the meanwhile look at all the courthouses being built around germany so many man you would imagine that i'm wasting a lot of military and diplo points by getting these so many years ahead of time but i really want the innovativeness and getting eight innovativeness is gonna really Really pay itself off in the long run. I think we can also make Siena our vassal now on the 5th of May. And we can actually make them our vassal. Let's do that. We can answer our demands, getting the money and the war reps. That's exactly what I'm going to go for. We will, of course, also vassalize the Swiss force religion. Oh, actually, I cannot both force religion and vassalize. I guess I can just vassalize them and I can force my religion after they're a vassal. Yeah, that's fine. That is a-okay. Before the massive world war, I'm also going to change the fort layout. Some of the forts are not really well positioned. I'm going to reposition them. I'm going to build one in Julish, for example. And I'm going to disband the ones that we have in Köln and Koblenz. Because Julish is basically going to protect all of these provinces here. Whilst the other provinces to the north are protected by uh, the Munster fort and the Hoya fort. I want to essentially make it so that the entire nation has this green hash over here. Because this means that every province is is protected by a fort and of course i want to build the forts in proper defensible locations such as salzburg over here which is actually a mountain fort the best kind of fort for that map and i'm also deleting all of the churches that i have to make more space for building slots churches are not as great as workshops courthouses and the various manpower buildings as well as manufactories lowering the autonomy whenever it's needed is also very important as the less autonomy you have the more manpower and the more economy you you get in return Ooh, the court painter fair enough i don't have the money for that but we can definitely get a, a loan and instead we get one stability definitely worth it especially when we're struggling with our admin points i also started recruiting two more armies and i'm probably going to recruit another one afterwards as the coalition against me is getting quite large i do suspect it's going to trigger anytime in the nearby future and if it doesn't trigger i'm going to be the one attacking them okay now i'm seriously worried because scotland just joined the coalition and guess what scotland is a two province minor it's always the small insignificant nations that trigger these things man oh the long-awaited truce with the austrians is done i have to attack these guys i actually have to attack these guys they're allied to england which by the way <laughs> has the castilians as a uh, junior partner and has a big chunk of france as well so they're pretty strong overall and if i do attack austria then then the coalition 100 percent will trigger but i'm not so scared of it you know what let's do it let's actually attack the austrians booyah shaka Low. time to reclaim the austrian march boys we don't have time to wait for this let's just go ahead and assault the fort in uh, vienna how the hell did the english get here so fast actually i think it's because they're at war with the ottomans aren't they yes that's why the ottomans are basically at war with the same alliance block that i'm at war with so i gotta get more war score than the uh, ottomans do we have the big battalion yeah 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 bring some reinforcements and solidatio and bring in the troops yo guys are not gonna win this we got the numbers not not something that every Prussian commander ever said. Oh, thank you so much, Auto Bros. You're the best rival I could ever imagine I would have. So I siege down the capital of Firenze, but I'm not gonna kill off their Protestant rebels because I want them to actually become a Protestant nation. So because of that, I'm just gonna take their money, cancel their core, I guess, and uh, trade all that juicy stuff, essentially. And I'm gonna let these rebels do their thing. They pretty much got both of the provinces now, so let's see what happens. And guess what? They did become become protestant brandenburgian siege of uh, toledo 1530 
visualized, guys. Oh, wow. The Ottomans only took like five provinces from the Austrians. That's really not much. Whoa, hold on a second, boys. I saw something. It's the Church of England, everybody. Looks like Church of England is gonna even give us some monies. Hell yeah. I'll take the 120 ducats. Guy that lost a lot of manpower. But now we can easily crush what's left of the Austrians. Actually, they're willing to give me what I want from them. So, there's literally no point for me to continue with this war in that case. And we got parts of Austria, which is amazing. But most importantly, we got these areas here. And uh, from Trenchen, we're actually going to release the nation of Slovakia. Or oh, sorry, better yet, Nitra, from which we can feed back the cores afterwards. Skipping a bit into the future, the nation of Burgundy just left the coalition against us. And for that reason, I'm actually going to attack them. That was Volt, everybody. That was Volt. Okay, technically, I'm not Catholic, so it's not really that was Volt. But still, they're a different religion, okay? Oh, looks like we're going to catch some Burgundians over here. Hell yeah, boys. We got a 9 and a 2, but still, we won the battle. Italia. Let's go ahead and uh, assault this fort here so we can quickly uh, seize it from them. Oh, wow. Actually, Savoy only has the capital fort, doesn't it? Yep, that's it. So once we take the capital, we can piece them out. Nice. Hell yeah, boys. 19 days on Lille. Let's go ahead for uh, Luxembourgio now. And we recruited one more army so we can use this to deal with rebellions once they pop out. Oh, boy. Looks like we got a bit of a situation here and we got to bring our troops back because they're getting a lot of reinforcements. No, no. The reinforcements just went away. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, hold up. I just realized I got 1444 ducats, boys. Mmm, juicy. And another small battle in Naples. This time it's Einstack and Weipen. Apparently, they're really not interested in reinforcing anything. Sag feels really, really Sag, man. Let's try and hold them off here. They got movement lock, so... Oh, they can run away. Oh, they got what? Four maneuver. Fair enough. Barragio, time ski, and assault ski. Come on, Neapolitana. Nice. I actually took that from the rebels, didn't I? Oh, what's this little lonely army doing over here? Guys. Guys, come on. You need to let me stack and vibe in you a little bit, sir. Please don't run away. Actually, they cannot run away. <laughs> ah, they retreated there. I see. I see. Feels bad, man. But you got... Oh, what? Molise, you bastards. Daria, go battalia of Zealand. Oh, yeah, boys. Look at all these vassals here trying to fend off the Burgundians, boys. Actually, my vassals are winning, man. <laughs> They're getting their asses kicked by a bunch of vassalan boys. Nice. What? What? <laughs> Personal Union Russia? Bro, no freaking way. Oh, succession war. Oh, I see how it goes. I see how it goes, sir. I don't even want Russia as a PU, to be honest. But hey, if it happened, it happened, okay? We're gonna have to fight for this. All right, that means we're gonna actually peace out some of these nations. How many people are we at war with right now? We're at war with half of Europe and the other half is in the coalition. So yeah, it's it, it's not gonna end up well. I'm probably gonna have to slack in a few times, but it is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. Let's Let's start by piecing out Savoy. I'm giving back my course to my Swiss Vassalan, canceling their course because I don't want them to have any cores. And uh, pretty much it, not much else. It should make my Swiss boys a little bit happier also. Hot damn, Milano. Looks like we took out the entirety of the Neapolitan army there. And it's time to piece these boys out too. I actually want to cancel their alliance with Savoy and with the Aragonese so that the next war is going to be a lot easier. This way, the French also can start munching into the Burgundians as I don't really want to see them on the map anymore. I'm going to take the provinces that I have my mission for. And I'm also going to release the nation of Provence. And the reason for that is because Provence is not going to have any bad relations with us now that they've just recently been released. As consequence, once my war is over, I'll be able to diplo vassalize them. And look at all the juicy cores that they got in France. So I'm basically going to feed all of France to my Provence vassal. And there you go, some admin points to go alongside this. Oh, would you look at that, guys? The Russians are here to help help us except they're attacking what this is not where the enemies are sir excuse me my plan to get the french to attack burgundy also worked because i canceled their alliances france thought that it's a very easy target let's rush a little bit in this area here we want to take the castilian parts so we actually get some war score against these guys they are willing to give us white peace but i'm not going to peace out just for nothing i want to get something for my uh, troubles over here it was a fairly easy war for a succession and it means that we now 
now have and will continue to have the Russians as our junior partners. They got 105,000 manpower, man. That's insane. Their economy is not amazing on the other hand, so I might have to help them out a little bit with that. And as always, after a big war, everybody leaves the coalition because they're scared shitless that I might actually attack them. If Bohemia leaves, I'm definitely gonna attack them though. Holy mother of God, France, what the snaps did you just do? You took more than I expected you to take. Now let's see which truce is gonna expire next so we can plan our next expansion. And whilst we're doing that, let's give out the uh, Encourage Development Edict in every single province that we have because we're gonna be using all of our Diplo points and our military points to dev up our provinces for about one to two years continuously. So we've assigned the Encourage Development Edict in pretty much all of our provinces. We also have Prosperity in most of our provinces, not the entire country just yet, but wherever we get Prosperity, we get an extra 10% dev cost reduction in those particular provinces. So because of that, it's actually gonna cost us close to nothing to dev up provinces. Five mana points to dev up most of these areas here. So let's go ahead and bring every single province to 10 developers first. Why are we bringing every province to 10 dev first? Well, that's because we need extra building slots and 10 development means one extra building slot to build more manufactories, workshops, and other manpower buildings, for example, whatever is necessary. All that being said, my black flagged army retreated into my vassals lands and they're stuck here now. So I don't think I can get military access from the French, can I? Nope, I cannot get military access through any of these guys and these these guys are gonna die off due to attrition. I don't want that to happen. So as consequence, it leaves me with no option except Claire War, Reconquest on the French. And because they're part of the coalition, I'm gonna have to fight pretty much all of Europe here. I can't co nations, so I'm gonna be co the uh, Venetians, because I don't mind actually taking some lands or something from the Venetians. Let's go. Second biggest war of this session. I feel like I'm going into war after war, but it is what it is. Gotta be really careful with this armies here. I don't want them to get completely wiped out. So I'm gonna have to actually rush the forts in Verdun, Luxembourg, and Liege here. Baraggio and Assaultio. Let's do it, guys. Let's get through Verdun as Germans have historically done, right? Am I right, guys? <laughs> 49 days to take Verdun, a lot faster than what historically has been the record. Oh wow, there's actually four forts here, one next to the other, bruh. Always fascinated by how you pronounce this. Is it pluk? Is it like, you know, when you drop something, pluk? And once more, the Russians are here to help with the good 8,000 units. Best PU ever, man, I'm telling you. I'm actually getting more help from the Swiss than I am from the Russian. <laughs> oh, my bad, the Russians are getting their asses kicked by the uh, Lithuanians in this area. Yeah, bruh. Oh, no more army for pizza? Feels bad, man. They were nice chads, weren't they? Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit confused as to how the Poles managed to get all the way over here from the Polish lands and they got nothing to defend Poland, actually. I mean, my army is literally just going from fort to fort sieging everything in Poland right now. So I just discovered that Ethiopia is a three province minor now and the nation of Ogadin is the biggest in this. I've never seen Ogadin get this big man. I've literally never seen them get this big. Meanwhile, autos just keep on munching into everything of the Mamluks here and Ardalan's massive. What? When did these guys get so big? Don't they start as a vassal? Holy mother of God. What's been happening in the world? Now I really want to see the rest of the world. I also want to attack Bashkiria for but the gold mine they got maybe after my coalition war here. Jesus, mother of God, 67,000 manpower from slackening. Actually, if I did the increased enlistment edict, I would have gotten 25% more. So I think I'm going to do that if I need it another time. Albeit, I'm pretty sure I can win the without slackening a second time. I feel like the French are not having such a good day here. And because I actually want to take these lands for myself and I want a shorter truce, I'm just going to go for the 25% uh, money from the Hungarians, nothing else. I also just saw that Poland actually has a Hohenzollern on the throne as their main dynasty here. Look at that, boys. The Russians have started attacking because I gave them the direct order to take these provinces via the objective over here. So, for example, they're gonna try and rush for the fort in Lubnai. Oh, wow, dude. 50 admin points. I don't really need the admin points right now, but I'll take it in any case, even though I have to take a couple of loans now. Should be able to pay them off fairly soon. Or actually, I'll be able to 
sell some titles after I kill off the rebels for that matter. So let's do that actually. So I know that I said I'm gonna make uh, Siena the one that owns all of Italy, but plans have changed. I'm actually gonna make Milan the one that owns most of uh, the Italian lands because Milan has a ton of cores. So once I release Milan from the province of Chum, it's gonna be a lot easier using them to reconquer all of their cores. If the French don't turn back here, I'm gonna stack wipe their allies. Yep, they didn't turn back. Too late, French. Ah, uh, yes, smart Russian troopers here. 54,000 of them to siege one fort. Are you actually freaking kidding me right now? I gave you nine orders and you literally using your entire army for one particular order. Really, bruh? And it seems like this war is also over. We can get quite a little bit of money from them and we can also get all the cores that Provence has, which is a pretty strong... Oh, actually, I forgot one court. Damn it, Nantes! <laughs> Fair enough. Well, whatever. It's a pretty strong vassal to have in the French region, okay? And I also took by mistake the province of Camrach. Okay, you know what? This is not so bad. It's not so bad because it means that we have a connection through our land between our vassals here. So overall, it could have been a lot worse, but I really didn't want to take this province. Now my country looks so ugly with this one separate province over here. Ew. I'm just going to give the province of uh, Camrach to my vassal province. I, I really don't want this, man. So also sell some titles, pay off the loan we had, and build more buildings, of course. And now that we're at peace again, we can continue to develop our provinces for five mana, man. Well, on average, it's about 10 mana because we lost a lot of prosperity during the war, but it's going to get back up. And would you look at that? Almost 4,000 dev from just exploiting the uh, tax. Rejoice, people. Less taxes in our nation. Because everybody knows Germany doesn't have very high taxes. Am I right, Tommy? Remember that whenever you do develop your provinces, you're actually going to get 0.2 crownlands for every time you click that button. So your crownlands is going to eventually reach 100% after you dev up the country enough times. The best provinces to build the state house is wool provinces. As wool is the least valuable of all the trade goods. The same goes for naval supplies, but especially in Germany, wool is the number one area to build the state house, as that's going to lower the overall governing cost by 20% in all the provinces. So that means in all of Hesse, we get minus 20% governing cost. One thing I've said before, and I'll continue to say, is that every game is completely different. So mold yourself based on whatever RNG you get and just enjoy the game. In my case here, I'm going to attack the Austrians. And because I don't want to wait for 15 years for my truce with Bohemia to finish, I'm actually going to co-belligerate Florence, which is going to bring in Bohemia. And as such, I can get a five years, a much shorter truce with them. So think two steps ahead in order to get your goals achieved. Prague was quickly sieged down and because of that, I'm just going to white piece him now. Don't want to delay the truce from finishing faster, right? Same goes for the nation of Savoy. Are you actually freaking kidding me right now? I didn't get the freaking printing press. Who got this? Urbino got it, bro. Bro, no freaking way Urbino got this. Wow. I almost have a manufacturing in half of my provinces right now and I still didn't get it. Wow, dude. Wow. Hot diggity dog. No more English troops on the mainland. More monies as well. And the end of the Austrians is nigh because we're taking their entire country. We're just letting them keep Slovenia because I, I, I really don't want these lands. I just want historical German borders here, sir. Okay. Austria is a part of Germany. And it's time for dev session five or six. I, I don't even remember. I've been devving like crazy, man. Oh, guess what, guys? I forgot to click this button over here that lets me form the nation of Pruslansky. Yes, traditions and ambitions, which means I get the Prussian ideas, the best military ideas in the game that include discipline plus five, infantry combat ability plus 20, manpower, army morale plus 20, tradition decay minus 1%. This is ridiculously overpowered, by the way, as well as a little bit of uh, cost reduction for all of you playing tall enjoyers. Not to mention, we also get a flat army tradition 0.5. So this one mixes in amazingly with the soldier king of Prussia. The reason I waited for so long to form Prussia was because of obviously the governing capacity issues that the Prussian monarchy offers. You essentially get minus 50% governing capacity modifier. One easy way to offset this is actually to get the admin ideas that offer plus 25 governing capacity modifier or you can also go for certain monuments like the one in Madrid and the one in uh, Naples province of Napoli 
gives you 100 governing capacity. There's other ones around the world like the one in Bangkok and so on. Make sure that you give out the plus 100 governing capacity from each of the estates as well. Be an empire rank and of course make sure you get the uh, courthouse and the upgraded version which is the town hall built in every single province that you have. Plus build the state house alongside those buildings in every single province also. Once you have the town hall this is 50% reduction so that's essentially the offset for the Prussian government. And the reason I didn't expand too much with my own lands and I basically started getting vassals which eventually I'm gonna turn into massive nations that replace the old nations in these areas is simply because of the governing capacity issue. I do recommend between the 1515 and 1550s that you focus on developing your country, building the right buildings, having a strong army and a great economic backbone as afterwards and especially in the 1600s once you get absolutism it's going to be virtually impossible for anyone to stop you as you're going to have the strongest economy the biggest army and the fastest manpower recovery speed we got right now 3600 manpower that we're getting each month which is honestly insane and the reality is because we built the uh, barracks every time we develop a province it scales up so nicely it actually gives out a lot more manpower than it would if you didn't have that building that offers an extra 50% because I don't want to make this a one hour long video if you guys want to see the last part of this run which is going to see us turned into a Tsardom alongside our PU over here and it is going to see all of Europe a part of Prussia because we finished the playing tall part of this series and now it's the playing wide part of the series then hit that like button 10,000 likes and we'll get the final part out and consider subscribing if you enjoyed the content would really encourage me to make more videos like these in the future and remember to be a good person so I'll see you guys in the next one and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support you guys are absolutely amazing